All we have to worry about is continuously watering the Fatu Lata beach. Seed of devotion. Continuously engage in the chanting, remembering, the hearing of the pastimes of the Lord, the activities of the devotees. Continuously try to engage our body and mind and intellect in the service of the Lord. And that people will grow and grow. And as much as we waste our time engaging in discussions of what is not to do with Krishna and the devotees, hearing what is not to do with Krishna and the devotees, then the offense will be there and the Bhaktivedanta people start to shrivel again. This is what's happened once we were there in the spiritual world. But we chose, no, I want to be the enjoyer. And so everything shriveled up. The soul itself shriveled up, lost its form, and just ended up as a small pot. The consciousness became contaminated, covered with the idea that, yes, I can be the enjoyer, giving up our constitutional position as servant of Krishna and thus slowly entering deeper and deeper into the network of Maya. And now we have to simply cry out, sincerely cry out to Krishna. There is no other way. You're stuck in a hole. There's no way out. You have to take the help of somebody. Krishna, Krishna. But if it's only half-hearted, oh, Krishna, Krishna, please help me, I'm suffering now. All right, Krishna, now you've given me a bit of sense enjoyment. I have a better situation. That's all right. Just things seem to be all right. I like this. Until more suffering comes. Oh, Krishna, Krishna. So this kind of cheating, this kind of being underwater and drinking water on a fast day, this cheating mentality will not get us Krishna. It may get us praise from others, oh, you're such a nice devotee. We may be able to pacify our own mind, oh, I'm a good devotee. I do this, I do that. Can't do everything at once. Oh, I don't do everything at once. But that will not change the fact that time is moving on. The body is slowly disappearing. Whether we like it or not, we can touch it up each day and try to keep it going. But it's not going to stop it dying. It's not going to stop everything around us crumbling and dying. No way. We can take all kinds of treatments and try to fool ourselves in so many ways, but it's not going to happen. So if we're serious, if we actually understand that we're in a burning house and there is no question of putting out the fire, then we will really sincerely call out and we will actually rise back up into that position of the eternal servant of Krishna. So yes, knowledge very important to help us break Omagyana Tavaranyasha to break the darkness. But bhakti, that is what will bring us eternal life. That is what will bring us back to Krishna. No amount of knowledge, word jaggery, even if it's in line with the transcendental, is going to substitute for pure devotion. We may know so much. We may know so much about Krishna, what he looks like, what he does, what he eats, 
where he goes at such and such time and so what? He's still sitting here in the material world. Preparing for your next body. Unless, along with that, you're developing sincere devotion, sincere surrender to Krishna. That yes, I am yours, Krishna. Do with me as you please. This is all Krishna wants. That you surrender unto me. So I can enjoy you. That you can satisfy me. The conditioned soul doesn't actually like this idea because he wants to be the enjoyer. And here we're being told, no, you totally surrender to Krishna, cent for cent, and become his plaything, become his object of enjoyment. This is repulsive to the living entity, conditioned living entity. Yet we have to try to see through and realize that due to the contamination of the material nature, the long association with the material nature, we're not able to think properly. And thus we won't surrender. And what is the answer? The answer is to simply surrender anyway. Yes, we can discuss it in so many ways, give so many philosophical understandings, but the answer is to surrender anyway. If you actually want to be happy, then the answer is to surrender anyway. Regardless of the fact that we're just as soon not surrender. We're just as soon be told, oh, you're a nice devotee, Prabhu, don't worry. Everything's all right, you're chanting Hare Krishna, you're going on. We can call it fanatical, we can call it whatever we want, but the fact is, we have to surrender now. If we don't want to carry on suffering. And it's always right now is the time to become fully Krishna conscious. Always remember Krishna. Never forget Krishna. This is the central principle for the devotee. All other philosophy, all other understanding must be based around this principle. This is the eternal position of a living entity. We never forget Krishna. He's always thinking, how can I satisfy Krishna? Even when he is actually satisfying Krishna, he's still thinking, no, I must be able to satisfy Krishna more. Until he reaches that stage that he's totally absorbed in Krishna. His every thought, his every part of his being is the desire to satisfy Krishna. Until he goes mad, he's only Krishna. And when he can't see Krishna, then there's only an ocean of distress. Each moment will seem like a culpa or more. Oh, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Now her boys are running with Krishna. He goes behind a tree for a moment, disappears behind a cow for a moment. Oh, where is Krishna? They fall into an ocean of distress. Not that they just, oh, chant Hare Krishna for a couple of hours in the morning, go to Mongolati, take some prasad or whatever, take darshan of the deities, make a garland, and now go off and chit-chat. No! Moment by moment, they want to be with Krishna. Krishna. 